Cop and Marcota. Yes, it is. Beatrice Cop and Marcota bringing you the legal show from 5 till 6, a 30-plus year tradition where we answer all your legal questions, problems, or issues that you might have. The time to call is now. The phone number, 330-729-9977. That's 330-729-9977. One more time, 330-729-9977. I have two lines in Youngstown open if you would like to get through and ask our lawyers whatever legal question you might have. Got a problem as far as auto accidents, medical malpractice, dog bites, speeding tickets, divorce, dissolution, child support? How about wills, estates, trusts? How about any legal problem that you might have? We'll try on all comers right now. 330-729-9977. 330-729-9977. We'll get you through to us on News Radio 570 WKBN. 330-729-9977. What's the legal issue? Pick up the phone. Give us a call. We'll guide you in the right direction. We go to the law firm of Beatrice, Coppa, and Marcota. And let's take attendance. Mr. Reliable. You know who Mr. Reliable is, folks? That's attorney Mark DeVecchio. He is, to me, Mr. Reliable. Present Mark and accounted Hello. for. Yes, I'm here, Ron. As always, who is who is the guy I, I depend on most, lean on most in my hour of need when things aren't working out at the firm? <laughs> I think you know, Mark. Yes. It's the one and only Mark. It's the one and only Mark DeVecchio. Mark, as always, it's a pleasure and honor to have you on with us. Thank Mark you, Mark does the family law, folks. I, all, I say this about Mark DeVecchio. I mean it about Mark DeVecchio. You will not find a finer family law attorney. And frankly, Mark's a damn good attorney in all areas. I mean, but he's concentrated at the firm in family law, but he handles other uh, areas as well. And so Mark does an outstanding job, and so we couldn't be more proud. Thank you, And Mark, uh, let's see, who is assisting you tonight on the broadcast? Oh, you know who's assisting me. The, the, the guy uh, that holds everything together, the glue that holds this firm together. That's all I have to say. Uh, and, you know, it seems to me that he's been absent. Uh, I mean, it doesn't seem like, is attorney Justin Marcota with us tonight? He, it, my fall breaks over. I took a fall break. Yes, it seems I'm like, back. yeah, it seems like, let's see, we had Brian Cobb. Where were you last week? You, you, you were noticeably absent and missed. I, want I think know. we were going to have three medical malpractice lawyers on the show all the mics were accounted for so it was just gonna, it was just there was gonna, no extra it was mic one, yeah one divorce question and you know everybody's upside down so well, i, uh, I want to make sure out. that that uh, you know i want to make sure that that never happens again there's always got to be a microphone for the justin marcota you understand i agree justin hello <laughs> sure <laughs> maybe <laughs> hey Hey, Justin, for just a minute, it sounded to me like you enjoyed having the day off. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't testing. remember last time I, I took two weeks off from the show. So, yeah, I'm, uh, things, you, we had to we had to pull it back every once in a while. It's nice to take a little break. Now, the people missed you and they're ready to he- they're ready for you to drop some knowledge on them tonight. I doubt, I doubt so let's that, drop some knowledge I'll on everybody tonight. All right, so now let's uh, see. Uh, let's see, Attorney David Beatrice. He's packing. Bueller. <laughs> <laughs> Crickets. Attorney, yeah, Attorney David Beatrice not there. Okay, Attorney Jim Melfi. Mm, yeah. Not there either, huh? He's How in Florida. That, uh, what was, yeah, what was that uh, suntan guy that uh, came from Sarasota last time? Chris. Name. Chris. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, Nopic. Chris. Yeah, Chris Nopic. No, not hearing him either. All right, I guess it's just going to be the one and only Justin Marcota and, uh, and of course, Mark DeVecchio. And you know what I call that, folks? A damn good show is what I call that, <laughs> just so you know. That's what I call it. Guys, are you ready to get underway? Let's go, Ron. Sure. All right, so call, first caller, you're on with our attorneys tonight. Hello. Reporter, you're a religious terrorist. All right, that's my crank caller. <laughs> you're on the air. Hello. Line two, hello. You guys there? Yes, go ahead, please. So I had a friend that bought a lot in Boardman. He was going to do a new construction. It was listed as public utilities available, sewer and water. Well, we come to find out it's not. So it was listed incorrectly. It's basically an unbuildable lot. 
and everybody's just pointing fingers. What do you guys think? I think you could rescind the sale. I mean, if you bought it contingent on it being develop, developable land with, with sewer and water, and now you get it, it's kind of false advertising, right, Justin? It yeah, was there, misleading, there should... misrepresentation. Yeah, I mean, you were induced to... Well, that's, that's what I thought, too, but there's some obscure law from, like, the late 1800s saying that basically it's buyer's remorse no. if you don't do your due diligence. Caveat emptor? The, the caveat emptor is what he's talking about, caveat emptor. But, but here, there's an explicit warranty that's given. They're, they advertise it by saying sewer and water are available, we could tie you in, and because of that, it induced them into buying the property. I, I think... Was there anything with the... Because sometimes the real estate sale contracts can say as is, and if you waive inspection. No, I, it did not. It did not. Okay. It was listed and represented by realtors on both sides. Well, caveat emptor is a real well, thing. It really is. It, it, let the buyer beware. It means the buyer has the duty to inspect. But I would argue that if it's okay. advertised that these things are available, that that's what you're purchasing and you don't purchase it. Yeah, why would I bring in you know, somebody to survey the lot and, and yeah. do an inspection if you're representing sure. to me that this is already here. Why I agree. The money? I agree. There's a, I well, mean, not it, only that, we've done a little bit more research and we've talked to like Boardman Zoning and the prior owner. There's records that they knew that this was not public. So it was listed fraudulently as well. Well, I think he's got a case, don't you? Yeah, and, and, and if, if you... You know, if they engage in some kind of misconduct, misrepresentation, that may open up uh, to to some trouble damages. What do you think, Justin? You think they could get punitive damages if you if you're fabricating? Uh, it's some probably of the negligent. Uh, it, I mean, punitive damages are constantly misrepresented to the public about when they're available, right? And how you achieve them. Correct. Um, it's probably a negligent misrepresentation. And at the minimum of, let's look at it this way. If you can't get the equitable remedy to undo the contract, okay, rescind the sale, yes. you potentially would have the negligence claim for the amount of money it would cost to get the property to where it was supposed to be when you bought it. That's right. So if that's $50,000 right. for sore plumbing all that stuff so there's more than one way to skin this cat yeah, yeah. you you have remedies in a, a couple okay, different but, areas but you guys think there's some good alleys to go through to get this taken care of based on what you yeah. have shared with us based on what you have told us we do but the ultimate answer is going to lie in the purchase agreement right that was signed by all the you know parties. what you, you know what you need to do sir i'm going to tell you you need to get you that purchase, you need to get that purchase agreement and you need to get down to justin marcota's office ASAP because All right. it, it sounds like you got a good case. Okay? All right, guys, appreciate it. Thank you. I mean, it's ju it's just in real estate. If you're deceived, if they tell you that if they're hiding a wet basement and you buy the house, well, then you have a lawsuit against the seller as well as the real estate agent. I mean, you got to admit to these. And there's things. specific yeah, statutes. Disclosure. Latent defects is that the that's latent the defects? They're they're Un hid they're hidden. Hidden. You uh, can't yeah. see them with the eye. It's the termite case. <laughs> right. Yes, that is often how my, that's how my wife describes me after we got married, uh, that she discovered a lot of latent defects. In <laughs> <laughs> and she's still discovering them after 30 something years. She says, boy, there's even more that I never knew. That's about. A, at least you're still uh, together. That's good. <laughs> there you go. You're on the air. Oops, oh, you're nuts. OK, you're on the air. Hello. Hello, am I on? Yes, sir. Go ahead with your question tonight yeah this is this is a pennsylvania question but real quick we have a daughter who's living in a rented house the house has been sold to someone and we don't know who because no one's identified ourselves yet so she calls her landlord and says what's up and he doesn't know anything how does she pay rent or the lack of and what do you do when you're someone in a house that you don't know who owns so her land is this pennsylvania not ohio but we're right here on the line. We're so, in uh, uh, New Brighton. So her, Any answers? Her landlord is not the owner of the property? Right. As far as we know, he is not. He sold but, it. Is that accurate? Well, it was sheriff's sale because he didn't pay the taxes on it 
from what we understand. All right, so I guess my question is, at any point in time, was the landlord the owner of the property? He was, yes. Okay, all right, so, and it was sold share, sheriff's sale. I, I, I mean, you didn't pay the there's got to be a transaction. What I would do is I would open up a bank account, and I would pay my rent into a bank account. Uh, and and to show that the, you can escrow it to, to escrow it so that in the event someone does surface right in, in good faith you still make the payments but you're not handing it to anyone I got you that sounds good yeah that's that that's my recommendation I mean I'm sure that whoever bought this property sheriff sale is eventually going to make their presence known when they want to get the rent I, I think their information is probably well already behind the scenes available. what we hear is the person that bought the property doesn't really want it and is supposed to be in contact with the original owner to buy it back. So that that's it's real limbo here. Just and, and we rent. don't have control of any of it because yeah. it's our daughter, and All right. I don't know where to go. You know. Let me ask you a question. Why don't you try to buy it for for your daughter? I'm just I'm putting. Well, that out that's already passed. See, we missed the sheriff's sale, so mm -hmm. I, that would have been the ideal thing to do. I agree, but we missed that. We is, didn't realize the sheriff's sale was already happening. Is there a written that, lease? That's terrible. I know. Is there a written Does she lease? have a lease? That I know of, yes. But again, since this person doesn't own the house anymore, is that lease binding? Well, it well, would, that, how long? But, well, here's the thing. You, know. you could have signed a lease five years ago and never signed a new one, but the lease has lapsed. And you're really it would on be a month to month, month tenancy. Yeah. Um, the safest answer we can give you right now is grow the rent. All right, that sounds like that sounds like a very good advice. In other words, in good faith, we show that we're paying the rent. We're just not handing it to anyone. How that much that I like. I think that's a good out. I think there that you go. Works. How much? Uh, how much does she pay a month? Eight ninety, eight ninety five. It's right. in that area. All right, so it's a pretty good chunk of rents. Um, all yeah. right, yeah, very good. Appreciate your call. Well, I appreciate and it. I would, you guys run a great show. Uh, that was a nice question to answer. I never thought of doing, you know, a separate account. So right. I think that's a win. I think that's a very good win. And right, I would let the good. I would let the landlord know that th this is the bank and this is where the the rent is being escrowed, just to to keep. Yeah. But he transparent. Don't know who the landlord is yet. Well, no, whoever I mean, she's so dealing that, with, whoever she dealt with in the past. Yeah, whoever bought it at sheriff's sale. I'm pretty sure the tenancy so, would run with the land, though. Right. All right, next call, 330-729-9977. You're on a legal show. Hello there. For religious care. All right, so that's my crank caller. So, Boy, he's, just seemed, he's persistent. Seems, he is persistent. I mean, you know, I, I got to give him credits, you know, that he needs a new hobby. <laughs> but I kind of, at, at the same time, I kind of. How many kind times does he call intriguing. a day? Yeah, does he call you often? Oh, probably. Oh, Jen, no more than a couple hundred. Oh, I mean, God. and he got through twice already. <laughs> yeah, we got to screen yeah, these calls you know, but, better. Uh, but, but see, you you you, you got to be persistent. That's that's how it goes. Yeah, I mean, that's you know, this is how it is. It's a legal show, and we got to take legal questions. You got to send them a We're cease not, and desist you don't want, letter. Yeah, we can do that for you, Ron. Calls, right? <laughs> we could we could I send like that cease and desist. I like the idea of that. All right, that sounds that sounds like a good idea to me. Let's let's compose it uh, right now. Hey, talk to attorney Justin Marcota tonight and attorney Mark DeVecchio that are here tonight on the legal show on News Radio 570 WKBN. You got a legal comment or question? Call me right now. Three lines open in Youngstown, 330-729-9977. 330-729-9977. If you got a legal problem or question, we'll take on all comers, all callers. 330-729-9977. We'll get you through to us. With uh, three lines open here. For our attorneys, they'll be here tonight till 6 o'clock. 330-729-9977. If you want to talk with Attorney DeVecchio or Attorney, um, the one and only, Justin Marcota, one of the smartest men in the legal field, give us a call tonight. We'll answer your questions. Child support, divorce, DUI, custody, estates, evictions, auto accidents, medical malpractice, speeding tickets, you name it, we take on all comers and try to our best to point you in the right direction and solve a lot of your problems, if you will. And hopefully you won't need to get an attorney, but sometimes you have to find an attorney to solve these particular problems for you, and then we'll guide you in the right direction there. 
on the right attorney. Because sometimes, guys, when we say you need an attorney, if it's an estate problem, you want an estate attorney, right? I mean, you have some... You, you want to sometimes get an attorney that specializes in particular areas. Agreed? Absolutely. When you say, Justin. All right. Like, well, it's it's kind of tricky. Only because. What do you mean? Lawyers don't. They don't. We're not allowed to, yeah. to say we specialize in the same way that physicians and doctors do. There's very limited. Well, d- domestic relations lawyers, they have a fellowship that once you become a fellow, you could say that you know you're a, it, a family law specialist right but you have to meet certain accreditation marks correct and it's not there's not that many of them like there is in medicine where it's pretty much every body part every function right can be a specialist so somebody who advertises or holds themselves out in a particular area of law is important or somebody that you meet with and consult with and feel comfortable that they seem qualified to handle the issue is really the best way to flush out whether somebody yeah you'd like to think the area. You'd, li- you'd like to think that if a lawyer doesn't know his way into a probate court that he's not going to take a probate case however a young mark devecchio <laughs> at one point in time didn't turn anything away and uh took his lumps and that's kind of how y- you become what you become you know, you you almost know learn what not to practice a, by what being younger and taking things that right. you're like never again. Right, but, right. But I know a guy that said, "Hey, he's getting a divorce, and he didn't get uh, a guy like you, Devecchio, and get a family law lawyer." But he had a buddy that did other types of law, but he was a lot less expensive. And then he found out when a divorce was done, he wasn't less expensive. He was way more expensive because he lost everything. Yeah, sometimes. You follow what I'm saying. In other words. If if you if you have an estate issue, you need an estate attorney in most cases because that's kind of what they do on a day in and day basis. Trusts and estates. I agree. You need a divorce. You need a family law lawyer. And if you and if that and you need somebody outside of all of that. In a lot of these other cases, that is Justin Marcotte. I mean, Justin can do everything from criminal law to contract law. I mean, Justin is well versed in all those other areas. Because that's where he spends the bulk of his time. And the right, co- Mark? the caveat here, Ron, is it, you hit the nail on the head. Sometimes you get what you pay for. So, you know, what may seem like a bargain at the end of the case may not have been the best bargain. It's it's weird how it flips that way, though, because on some ends, people really do want to pay for the most expensive lawyer mm-hmm. they can afford because, you know, I forget the exact economic term, but lawyers are like diamonds. Only what people perceive them to be is what they're worth. Right. Okay. But you get in this other scenario where, hey, I've got this really big problem, but I don't want to spend that much money for a lawyer. So you're saving money, but then the result ends up costing you more. You still have a really big problem. Right. Funny how that goes. Yeah. It's it's just like I had a buddy that went to you know, a heart doctor because he was close and not far from his house. And and so it was just a lot more convenient as opposed to, let's say, going to Cleveland Clinic. And he thought that was a good idea. We buried him Friday. But uh, oh, anyway. Uh, oh, no, <laughs> just kidding. Oh, yeah. that's a bad joke. <laughs> I laughed. But it, it kind of makes person. a point. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I know. <laughs> Justin, that's why I missed you. I want you to know that. Let's take some more calls and see what we got. You're on the air. Hi. Um, I had a quick question. Go. Um, I work in Lordstown, but I live in Youngstown. So they take taxes in Lordstown for city taxes out of my check. Plus, I have to file separately for Youngstown tax, city taxes. Yeah. Yeah. You're not alone. Well, here's a, I, I, yeah, I got a, I got an answer for you. You want to know how that this is going to work out, correct? Well, I, I know, I've asked other people, and they haven't heard of it. So I was just wondering if that was true. Well, here, here's my answer to you. Call mm-hmm. Monday nights between 6 and 7 when uh, when Andrew Smith is with us. He's a CPA and a John Arnold show, and he'll be able mm-hmm. to answer that question because it's more of a tax question, okay? Okay, I'll do that. Thank you very Thank much. You. You're on but, the air with the attorney. So hello. <laughs> hello, caller. Hello? Yes, you got a question? Go ahead, please. Yeah, I had a contractor do some work for me early in the summer. Okay. It was a friend of mine. Um, and there was a, I'm having a problem. I didn't, I didn't see that coming. I haven't brought it up as, 
I haven't brought the problem up to him. How is there a statue on addressing the issue? No, you've got time. Is there just a time summer. limit or no? You're for for work like that. You've got at least four years. What's the problem? I had him do some electrical work for me around my swimming pool. Oh. I told him to stay away from my underground lines and. They got a little bit too close, and now I got a leak. Oh, okay. Well, obviously. Have you called him? <clears throat> Have you called I him? I haven't. Will you just wait and get electrocuted? I haven't electrocuted? addressed it as of yet. <laughs> no, I mean, a standby caller. Just hang on a minute. Hang on. We'll come back to you right after the headlines at 530. <laughs> Trying to solve your problem right after this. Stay tuned.
Front and center, Your Honor. News Radio 570 WKBN 534. Thursday means it's a legal show brought to you by Beatrice Kaufman Marcota. From News Radio 570 WKBN, our attorneys will be here tonight till 6 o'clock, as always on Thursday. Taking your legal questions, 330 729 9977. 330 729 9977. We'll get you through to us. And uh, I want to go back to this caller. Caller, so you have this problem as far as your pool is leaking from a buddy that you had come over and do electrical work, but you haven't called your buddy yet and told him that you got a problem to see if he'll come over and deal with it. Is that accurate, caller? That's correct. All right. Maybe you should start there. But wouldn't you just think, uh, guys, you should start there? I would attorneys? definitely start there. I mean, you got to be pragmatic. I mean, electric and water, they don't mix very well. So... Uh, I would put him, and especially since you said he's your friend, uh, I would reach out to him in a friendly way saying, hey, you know, there's, there's, I think there's an issue here. I have a leak. So uh, could you come and take a look at it for me and, and approach it amicably at first? I mean, if he's a, that's why it's tough to do business with friends, because when things go sideways, then you end up in litigation and you lose a friend. So try not to do that. And to answer well, the original question, you're not out of time. Right. Yeah. Okay. In other words, he can legally okay. go after him. But, caller, why do you think he caused the leak? I mean, is it right around where he was digging or something? Yeah, well, the power that goes into the house is right where the filter and the pump are. And I specifically asked them, don't go too close. And they had to go under a, um, a walkway, a concrete walkway. And, yeah, I know that's happened. I know it happened. All right. It had to have, because I never had a leak there before. It's it's seeping out of the ground, and you know exactly where. I just don't know how deep it is. And well, maybe maybe you should call a pool company and get that fixed, or can you fix it yourself? Well, no, no, it's nowhere near the pool. It's it's a it's a line coming to the. Right. I mean, can um, you can you fi- can you fix the line or not? You or do you have to have a pool guy do it? No, I could probably do it. I just not gonna dig it up and try to find the leak. Right. All right. I think so, I I think I do that all. before springtime comes around when when you want to use the pool or before freezing happens. Right. Just an well, idea. Well, I used it all I used it all summer with it leaking, so I didn't lose a whole lot of water. But I just wanted to address it when the season was over. That's all. You know, it's always been my rule of thumb: you don't want to be leaking in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Thank you for your call. All right, and. Uh, that kind of stuff is why I'll be doing the uh, introduction for the next house ban. I'll be doing 10 minutes of stand-up. There you uh, go. You're on the air. Hello. There you go. Rain and dew, boys. All right. You're on the air. Hello. <laughs> Mr. Persistent. Cease and desist. Yes, Good evening, gentlemen. Hey, this is this is a uh, uh, debit card call because I'm in Trumbull County, and I know some one person in uh, Mahoning got it, but they're dead. The Ohio Electricity Litigation Prepaid MasterCard, they sent these out to certain people. Are you familiar with that? Because I'm one of these type of people, I just look at scams. And incidentally, yes, I'm familiar with them because I got one. And you know what? The, what's on them? That's, are, you, are you talking about the card that was a rebate from House Bill 6, caller? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. That There's a whopping, I believe, $7 on that card, incidentally. That's Did you it. use your card? No, but I have it, and it's that's what's on it. Seven dollars, I believe, is what's on it. They're showing you certain things you should do, and this and that. So, no, mine is still here, and I said I'm just going to call to see if anyone else got it, and what are the things? Because I have regular credit cards, but it's a debit card, and it's showing you you can't use it at gas pumps, ATMs, cash access, and all that stuff. So, okay, well, Ron, you just answered my question. You have yours sitting. Yeah. In an envelope like I do. Yeah, and did you, did you get a pin with it? They they traditionally send you a pin number too. Well, they no no this one here didn't have a pin. They said if I wanted a pin, I can get a pin. Oh yeah. my! All right. Well, I think it's all a seven dollars. But if anyone else got one and wants to uh, comment about it, I I welcome them. Okay. Thank you very much. So Could you put you. it in Don't an spend ATM? It all in. Yeah, I'd at least. Can you put it in the, the ATM seven bucks? and withdraw the seven? Nope. Nope. Oh. He's got, it's got seven dollars. You know, you could. Uh, what can you do with seven dollars? I'm gonna just leave the card alone. That's all. All right. Why are there restrictions on it? I'm with this guy. Where I'll have to revisit mine. It's just sitting there, and I thought it's it's more of a pain in the butt than anything. 
I, I, Revisit it, and you'll see there's no pin. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good show. show. Good show. Ah, it's a great show. All right. So it's the legal show. News Radio 570 WQ. And you're on the air. Are you there? Yes, I am. Go oh, ahead, no. Oh, no. You know. Oh, don't even start with uh, go ahead, oh, caller. Oh, you knew the voice right Excuse away. Me. No, 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 no. Excuse me. Please let me handle this. Caller, this is a legal program. Justin Marcota, Mark DeVecchio. Do you have a legal question for attorneys tonight, caller? I do. I do. I want to know uh, whether ahead. or not they're holding down the fort because I've had jury trial after jury trial. The old dog has to has to perform new tricks. So where, so where do we find you? You've been in, in jury trials. That's why you can't be on a program? That's basically it, and I'm going to Florida tomorrow. Wasn't I in the I, jury trial the, with you? I had a what? Wasn't I in the last jury trial with you, Justin? No, really, you were not. <laughs> if you remember, the jurors, when we got to talk to them, looked at you and said, "Why don't you help David?" Like Jen Paris helps Marty Hume. And one That's juror was so you. afraid of you, she asked the judge if she could go home. Okay, if you really want to talk about <laughs> what the juror said. <laughs> so, Ron, so, it was a rough case. It was a rough case. So the gas pump earlier today, and I'm yeah. and, and putting gas in a car, and so the guy says to me, hey, it's Thursday. I can hardly wait to hear about his broken dinghy. Honest to God, true story today. <laughs> today. Well, Justin promised me that even though I gave him the dinghy case on uh, in May, that he said by this coming May, the case will be over with, and I'll have either a new dinghy or money for a new dinghy. That's what Justin promised me. Well, go down All to right. Florida and find uh, some prospects of a new dinghy that you could purchase for yourself. Yeah. I mean, you That's know. what I'm going I'm going to the Fort Lauderdale boat show, Ron. That's why I can't be there tonight. Well, why? You, you I already have to get up very early. You have a boat already. What? Why do you got to do a boat show? You already have a boat. Well, I'm, I might want to get another one. And besides, Justin is such a good lawyer that he's representing me on my dinghy case. Yes. And he might get me a bigger dinghy than I already have. <laughs> that's All impossible. Right. That, I can only get you a dinghy that's comparable. That's yeah, I mean, you know, unfortunately. Now, Justin promised me a bigger dinghy. No, but but unfortunately, saying he can only deliver a small dinghy, it has to be similar to the current dinghy, all right? So it can't be a bigger dinghy, apparently. I understand that, Ron. <laughs> I, I'm glad. Did you see me and Justin on that case? It was a very hard case, Ron. I saw you on the front page of the paper last week. I mentioned it to the attorneys that were here. Two days in a row, Ron. Two days in a row. Yeah, yeah. And, and I said, boy, look at David's out doing that kind of stuff. David, I, I really don't think you need a new boat. I mean, you have a boat. You like the boat. It costs $9,000 to get the oil change. Why would you even consider getting a different boat? Because I want a new dinghy. And if you get a new dinghy, you got to get a new boat to go with the new dinghy. What's a, a boat, a comparable boat like the one you have, cost something like that? Uh, $70,000, 80000 <laughs> I don't even want to say, Ron. It's a little embarrassing. <laughs> right. So uh, so it's probably not a good idea to get a new boat. I, w I would say keep the boat you have. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Because it's the only way I can stay on edge. Is if I'm broke, and if I'm broke, uh, you're on edge, I stay on edge, and that way people get the best representation they can get. No, well, you've been doing really good. I mean, no, nah, I mean, I mean, Beatrice is doing great. I mean, he is he is one of the best attorneys out there. There's no question about it. I mean, so you've been in all these jury trials while these other guys are sitting back at the office, basically. Yeah, they don't music. do anything. Justin, he doesn't do anything. Mark, Mark works hard, but Justin. Does Justin, All I hear from Justin is whining and complaints. Does it's he? Does he even call? Does he call to see how it's going or check in with you? Or? No, oh no, nothing. Really, nothing. Who was I on had the, to do the whole the day by myself? Who was on the cover I had, of the paper I had with to you? even operate the computer by myself. Oh my God! You had to operate a computer by yourself. Yes. It's, it's oh my scary, God. isn't it? I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> Ron, I want you to know something. Though. Did you have to, David, did you have to use the Google machine? <laughs> I did have to use the Google machine. I have to tell you something, though, Ron. 
38 years I've been doing this. <laughs> I finally had my Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson moment, and Justin could verify that. Am oh, I right, Justin? I want to hear it. He did. He he. What happens? <laughs> so, he was he was cross examining a witness about their perception of the events on a certain evening, and the person kept fighting David on giving him the answer he wanted, and which was the correct answer. And then eventually the person said, "Well, I wanted to see," and then it all just cracked. So, in other words, he, the guy finally on a stand broke down and said he ordered the code red, basically, is what you're yep. saying. Basically, uh -huh. that's what happened. Was was, and Justin was there to witness it? Justin witnessed it. Justin, what was Justin your... Justin didn't savor the moment. Right. Justin looked at me, and he's like putting his, you know, his hand across his throat, like, cut it off, Dave. You're not going to get it from the witness. No, and I had, I, I had to be Tom Cruise for one moment. You ordered the code red, didn't you? You're gosh darn right I ordered the code red. See, Justin, when are you going to start listening to David and his instincts? Well, he he guessed right, but he was it was so close. <laughs> it was so close. You can't the handle the truth. The gamble huh? paid off, but it was so close. Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it was a big gamble, Ron. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it's a big week. So you had your Tom Cruise moment, and you were using a computer. And I was using a computer, and Justin wasn't there. Right. So why aren't okay. you? Why isn't Justin going with you? He's like your best friend. Why isn't he going with you to the boat show? I don't know. All I know is the jury. We, could, we went back and talked to the jury. You know what the jury said to him? To why don't we... you help David? Mm -hmm. No. That's what they said, Justin. Yeah, don't we covered don't make your, me we covered your bring in Judge Norfio to back me up here. So the jury noticed that, uh, that Justin doesn't help you, David. No, they the noticed jury that. noticed that right. David is a exactly. train wreck at council table. There's wrappers and papers and things all over the place. But he won. Well, I couldn't win the one charge. There was just no way getting around it. Well, Justin, Justin knows what I mean. There's just no way getting around the one charge. Yeah. But it's, uh, and that's why we finally folded up the tent. Well, there you go. All right, Justin. So what a great moment it is, David. Now, I'm, uh, I'm going to encourage you, go to the boat show. It doesn't mean you have to buy one. Where's the boat show, in Florida? Fort Lauderdale. Oh, okay. Which so, is the boating capital of the world. Right. But, uh, you know. Ron, you, did, you get the, did you get the story that I sent you? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Unbelievable. Absolutely it's unbelievable. It's pretty unbelievable, isn't it? Yes. Unbelievable and... Uh, uh, I had a big week, Ron. Yeah. Unbelievable and really, truly sh shocking. Not surprising, though, David, but shocking. I did I did read that, yes. Yes, I did. And you know what well, I... Well, I'll let you finish the show with the... With the with the boys, Justin <laughs> eventually will get to my level. It might take him a couple more years. Justin's well, a little should. afraid You've of been jury. practicing law longer than I've been alive. <laughs> really, you have to go there, Justin. <laughs> you started it, David. <laughs> you have to go. You got to call me an old man. You know what? This old man taught, taught you a lot of new tricks, Justin. Why don't you just admit it? No, that, Brian's not that old, and he taught me. So. Oh, really, Brian? Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. Have fun, David. You make my day. Thank Safe you. travels. Bye. Safe travels. <laughs> that is a true story. I heard that at the gas pump today when I was at the gas pump. Hey, it's Thursday. Looking forward to hearing about his dinghy. Honest to God. True story. You're on the air. Hello. One ringy dingy. Yes. Hey, uh, hey, talking about that uh, electrical refund card? Yes. I got mine, and I, I it came out of nowhere. I didn't expect it, so I thought it was a scam. So I eventually got on the Google machine like uh, <laughs> Attorney Beatrice, <laughs> and uh, I, figured, I found out that it was real, so I got a pin. I went through the steps to get the pin, took it straight to the liquor store, Use that, and then use my card after that to, for the rest of the balance, and wiped it out. Right. Sounds so like a plan. 
And how much was on that card? Wasn't it like seven dollars? Yeah, it was seven or eight bucks. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. It was just a, they could keep it as far as I was concerned because it was so insignificant. Yeah. Yeah, and I wasn't expecting it, so I thought it was some kind of scam because they were talking about you could add funds to it, you know, and use it as a yeah, and, whatever them cards. So, and, yeah. and, and that's your big rebate from the from uh, the power company, seven dollars. Unbelievable. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. I guess the rest went to that other power company in whatever state that is. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. I'm yeah. telling you where the bulk of it went. One word, my friend, attorney fees. That's two words, I guess. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, that's true, too. Yeah. That's, that's who got the bulk of it, these attorneys. Yeah. We know that. All right. I'm glad you got uh, All right. I'm glad you used it. So it's legit. You're on the air. Hello. Yes. I have a question regarding issue two coming up. Okay. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, because marijuana, my understanding is, uh, on a federal basis, is a class one drug. Schedule. Same class Schedule, as yeah. So if it's a federally prohibited drug, how can Ohio or any other state say, we're going to legalize this? Well, Technically, they can't. Okay? It's just the federal government has stopped enforcing the punishment. And they're allowing the, regular, the, the yeah. states to make their own decision They haven't on taken that it issue. off because, believe yeah. me, if it's, it's on there for a purpose still. Because if there's a bulk amount of illegal marijuana being trafficked in the United States, They'll the charge federal government with, yeah. still wants to shut it down. But in terms of recreational use and consumption, across the board, it's basically been decriminalized or legalized at the state level. But technically, the supremacy clause of the Constitution means that the federal government has the final say. So if they wanted to sweep in to Colorado tomorrow and just shut everything down, they could. But the way that they effectively do it is through taxes. Because Okay, state- you're looking at it from a, a single consumer standpoint. I'm looking at it as an industry per se through the state of Ohio. In the bulk, those are huge amounts of marijuana that they're talking about selling and getting tax revenue from. It's, it, you know, that's another way to look at it, another slant on it, the way I see it. But uh, you've answered my question. I, I just wondered, how is it that they would go about doing this? I guess it's just politically supported, but it's legally it, it it's, isn't. Here's how the federal government, without doing it through the DEA, gets regulates the crap out of weed is taxes. Right. You don't get to deduct any of your business revenue. It's all technically illegal money that you've earned, but you have to report. Can you so, put it in federal institutions? It's it gets weird. Well, the, yeah, it gets the weird. Bank, the banks had a hard hard time dealing with this when this first started because it did. It's, uh, it's they were on the hook for the laws. It's it isn't a, as I understand it, they got a deal in cash that that, that uh, these yes. institutions. It's all cash because of the federal laws. Have you guys heard that? Yeah. Yes, so yes, if, absolutely. If you if you spend <laughs> in a business a hundred thousand dollars and you made two hundred thousand dollars, you'd really only be taxed on a hundred thousand because the first half gets written off because it's what you put into it. Uh, business it's, expense. Yeah, yeah, but not with marijuana. So it's to everything that comes in is taxable. A hundred percent that you earn is taxable. You can't write off the expense. Do you know of any suits challenging uh, state laws uh, because of the, do you call it supremacy, supremacy clause, uh, that are currently going through the courts? Well, I no, don't. no, there's not. You can't challenge the supremacy clause. Federal law not Not, trumps... not the supremacy clause, but using the supremacy clause, challenging the state's rights to do this. No, you kind of got it a little backwards. I mean, the, the, well, the government, the federal government decided they... Yeah, the, the government, the federal government just has to enforce the law. They're choosing not yeah. to. It's not okay. like they don't. It's not like the state passing a law or legalizing marijuana eliminated the federal government's right to enforce the ban against it. Okay. Under the Controlled Substances Act. But they're giving each state the autonomy to make their own decision. Right. It just. It, it's super complicated, and it keeps growing faster. Right. Than the federal government wants to deal with it. It just seems more of a muddled thing that has not really been cleared up. Um, You're right. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's see what people do um, with the uh, with the vote. Thank you. Thank you. It's one of the biggest problems, is it not? I mean, there's some interesting information. So basically, they can't take any deductions is what you guys are saying as far as 
uh, federally on any of the money that they invest, like most businesses would. And it's a huge problem because it's dealing in cash. And uh, I guess they, I, I su- suppose they can take that cash down, put it in a bank, though, or something like that. It's, it's, it's really weird. I mean, it's really just the whole thing is strange. But we shall see what happens. All right. Uh, you're on with the attorneys. Hello. Did I lose him? Hello. Is that me? Yes, it is. Go ahead, please. I have a question on uh, on the same lines of uh, the marijuana uh, law, yeah. whether it's Ohio or any state. What is that going to do with the uh, gun rights? Well, that's a frequent question people people are, are well, asking. You can't have a weapon under disability, so if you're high, you can't have a weapon. Right. So if you have a if you have a medical marijuana card legally federally you uh, can't have a permit to own a gun. No, you just can't be under the influence. You can't be under the influence while having the gun in your possession. So you can't be high and have a gun on you or in your car. It's the same logic as you can drink alcohol and have a driver's license. You just can't operate the vehicle while you're intoxicated. Very good analogy. Very good. Perfect. I thought I thought there was a law that um, that if you was addicted, if you had addictive uh, yeah, that has to be adjudicated. Showed the addiction that you shouldn't um, own uh, gun rights or yeah, a permit. To, that has to go through a court, and you be adjudicated, basically a, a habitual drunk or drug now, abuser. Uh, now, caller, okay. do, caller, do you have a medical marijuana card? No, I don't. Are you thinking of getting one? No, I don't want one. I I don't I don't do any drugs. I was just I was just curious uh, with all these um, with all the frequency of uh, the availability with uh, marijuana, what that would do to gun rights. I thought maybe right. um, the so, government was trying to maybe tie that into gun rights. See, and shame on me because as you were talking and. I know this sounds terrible. As you were talking, it sounded like you were a drug user to me. You know, you kind of have that drug user voice. And I was thinking, boy, this guy smokes dope. But uh, but uh, but but you don't. And you're just asking for general information, which I think is good. See, I was kind of prejudging you just based on kind of your monotone. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm from the South, so maybe that's got something to do with it. Well, I think it probably does. That's excellent. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate it. I won't, I won't uh, do any of those... Uh, you taught me a lesson here tonight. I appreciate your call. All right. Uh, thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. He's from the South. I appreciate it, Goober. Um, what's uh, – come on, Justin. Come on. I'm making a joke. All right. Uh, what's See, on I, found that from... fun- I found that funny. <laughs> that... I just haven't heard the word Goober in a long time. No, that's from the, that's from the Andy Griffin show. Oh, character. Yeah. Right, just... I mean, I, I used to no, – I, I remember the Andy Griffin theme music, and I used to panic and change the channel. Why? Because oh, I just I was like it was in black and white. It was color TV here. Oh, okay. All right. So what's happening tomorrow morning on WFMJ today at uh, what six forty in the morning? Uh, Who's going to be appearing? I guess David forgot to mention that before he got off, but I don't know, and that's the best way to have it. <laughs> really? Okay. So David will be there. Well, no, David won't be there. I thought he was going to uh, Florida for his bus. Well, he's, but maybe he's you know he's getting old and he's got to do things. He's got patterns and. He'll be up at 4.45, and he'll get there on time. I'm sure his flight's not till 9. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Justin, thank you for returning to the program. Please don't be absent too, uh, too long. Work on, uh, on fixing Dave's broken dinghy, if you don't mind. He needs it to, to work. Time. The sooner the better. He can't go throughout winter with a broken dinghy. And uh, Attorney Mark DeVecchio, it's my pleasure. Thanks, thank Ron. Thank you, guys. See you next the week. The Legal Show, all right, is brought to you by Beatrice Cop. And Marcota. Back with open line.